Hey, what's good creators? Welcome back to Monzo Media. So this is a spur of the moment video, so it's not going to be edited as I normally would. We're already in Luminar Neo, and I really wanted to show you a couple more images using the Relight AI. And this is what I wanted to really focus on, like this type of scenario, street photography, perhaps some landscape photography as well. So first of all, we're going to play with the brightness near so that the foreground becomes brighter. And you're going to see that as if there was a light up here, you know what I mean? But what's really cool is this depth slider. So you could really see how that affects the image. So basically the lighting is gone now when it's all the way to the left. And as I pull it to the right, you're going to see the brightness increase in terms of depth. So it really brightens like all the way down here without even touching the brightness far slider. All right. So I'm going to keep this right at about 40. If I do a before and after, it's it's a little bit of an adjustment. It's not too overdone. And then we're going to play with the brightness far slider. And you see, especially in the sky there, if I bring it down, it really brightens up that image. If I bring brightness near up all the way to fire to do a before and after, you see the results there. Now this is one of my photos that I took in downtown Toronto and I wanted to kind of do two things here. So first we're going to brighten up the image uh, quite a bit here because it is the foreground is purposely underexposed so that I could see you know the CN Tower in the background and exposed properly. That was the look I was going for. But should I want to you know increase that brightness how the road comes through now and you can actually see there's people here in the corner right so before I change brightness far, we're going to play with the depth. And as you see, the depth really brings out the buildings in the background there. With brightness far, we could further enhance that. Now let's do a quick before and after. And yeah, now it looks kind of, you know, evenly exposed, which most normally most people would do. Now, the second thing I wanted to do with this image was see if it'll remove the power lines here because it's a darker image and the power lines are kind of lost in the shadows here. I'm curious to see how it's going to handle this particular image. So we're going to click remove power lines wait a few seconds let it do its thing this is real time I'm showing you currently how the performance is but again don't judge it based on this demonstration so it did remove one of the power lines here well actually several of the ones that were coming across here it did not get the the one at the top here so even in this area here, you could see it. I know it's dark, but um, let's see if we can relight that even more so you can see it better. There you go. As if it kind of totally ignored it. <laughs> but the other ones underneath it got, and you know, there's a bit of artifacting here. I could see Some very small ones here that we'd have to clone out or erase. But now it makes me think, will it work if I click this a second time? No, I don't think it's working. <laughs> so very interesting. So it did take a little bit off it there, but forgot the rest here. All right, so in this example, this is a landscape photo, obviously, that was probably purposely underexposed to edit and post later. So I was curious to see how it would work with landscapes. So again, let's play with our foreground brightness. Now you see in this area here in the water, it's a lot brighter. And assuming that you can play with the depth, you see like from the middle point on, as I increase the depth, it also brightens almost to the back cliff there, I would say. And then again, we can further enhance background there. Wow, that works really well. I'm actually pretty impressed with how well it preserves the details. And you know, if I had the full suite, you would end up increasing the saturation, playing with the colors, the contrasts, 
uh, to get those colors back. And yes, it's kind of like increasing your exposure, but, but with this you can control, in a sense, the foreground and background, which is very cool. Now let's play around with the warmth just to see how that looks. Actually, I want to make it cooler. There we go. Yeah, if we do a before and after, wow, it's like it's like a photo from dusk to dawn, as if they were taking at different times of the day, but it's the same image. Now, of course, I have to do one portrait style photo, but this one is a group of three people, slightly underexposed here, and of course you could see under her chin. I definitely want to adjust the exposure there, bring out the shadows from that area. So let's see how this handles it. We're going to start with brightness near. Well, that kind of happened pretty fast. If I bring it all the way, it's a little too excessive. You could start to see some haloing, which we could probably fix with the slider. There you go. But it is a bit too bright for me, so I'm going to bring it down just a tad here. For brightness far, let's increase it just a little bit. So in this case, the depth really, you can see it, you could see it around the group. Maybe give it a bit of warmth here. Let's do a before and after. Now, if you're new here and this is your first video and you're wondering, what the hell's wrong with this guy? What are you talking about? Uh, be sure to check out the, the other Luminar Neo videos, the one I posted a few days ago, or the Luminar Neo overview, and uh, you can find them um, on one of these areas here. We'll talk to you soon.